Carl Schuf here from snorkel.tv and today I am going to be answering one of my readers questions um, who's been following my series on Tween Max. Um, and in case you haven't learned about Tween Max yet, please check out my tutorials or go to greensock.com for some more information. Uh, well up until this point we have discussed tweening basic properties of movie clips, moving them from point A to point B, flipping them, scaling them, and also working with sequences of tweens and staggering those tweens. And we also talked about the all from method of tween max, which allowed you to take multiple movie clips, put them in an array, and then tween them all the same exact way. And in one of my previous videos, um, we did a little tutorial on this guy right here, where all four clips follow the same tween instructions. And that's great, but where you run into a wall is where once your tweens resolve, if you want to go further, like maybe all of these buttons, once they got large and stopped, maybe they then fade out and then fade back in or move around. Every time you want to add another effect on in the future, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so whenever you're dealing with complex sequences of animation, you're going to want to up your game and check out Tween Max. So in Google Chrome here, I'm on the green sock site looking at Timeline Max, and this little animation that's playing is all driven by Timeline Max. And in short, Timeline Max is a container that can hold multiple Tween Max and Tween Light instances. And all of those individual tweens automatically will be set up to be run consecutively. So when the one tween ends, the next one will begin. You can stagger them, you can have them overlap, um, and once your timeline is built, you can literally scrub through the entire animation, you can navigate to a specific point in the animation, you can adjust the time scale. If I bring the time scale down really small and hit play, you will see that the animation, let's resume it or restart, is going to run very, very slow. In fact, so slow that you can hardly see it running at all. Wah, 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 wah. And the opposite of that would be to increase the time scale. So you don't have to go in and tweak numbers in 5,000 different places. You have these global parameters that will control the entire animation and various offsets. So check out Timeline Max and really, um, for an overview of how it works, you got to click on watch a video. Um, I've only been using Timeline Max for one day, and it's amazing what I learned, but I wasted a lot of time screwing around with the documentation where watching this video would have saved me a lot of time. Um, Jack Doyle does an awesome job of explaining the larger concepts so that you can enjoy all of the features of Timeline Max. Today, I'm going to be jumping pretty much right into it just to answer the question, how do I set up an advanced sequence? So I'm going to assume that you have the courage to watch this awesome introduction video on the Green Sock page. Okay, that being said, let's do it. I'm going to go into Timeline Max Basic.fla just to show you exactly what we're trying to achieve. Um, we want multiple objects to follow the same sequence. So here I have all four boxes are moving up, they're scaling, and then they're rotating. And as you can see, this animation plays once and then rewinds, goes back to the beginning, following all the steps in reverse, and it will yo-yo like this back and forth forever. Um, the code for this is really very, very small. I'm going to go to Timeline Max Basic Start, which is a file that has no code in it. Well, a little code. We're importing the GreenSock classes. I'm creating an array of all the instance names of those boxes, and I have some code set up here. Let's just get rid of this. This is the basics for what you need to construct a new instance of Timeline Max. And again, a timeline is a container of multiple Tween Max instances. In order to get anything out of Timeline Max, you really got to have the basics of Tween Max or Tween Light under your belt. So my timeline is blank right now. And what I'm going to do, just to show you a little bit of the sim set, syntax, is I'm going to tell my timeline to append multiple. And append multiple means I'm going to put on multiple tweens to my timeline. And inside of append multiple, I'm going to provide a tween max instance. I'm going to tell tween max to do an all two. 
please check out my tutorial on all from, and you'll get the basics of how this works. All two needs to know where to find the movie clips. So I'm going to say look inside of boxes array, and we're going to take half a second and we're simply going to move the, change the Y value of all clips at the same time to 180. All right, test this out. And so now all four clips move up. All right, one line of code controls all four clips. We could have done that with just tween max by itself. Where timeline max comes in handy is when I want to do something after that. Um, I'm going to go into a little scratch file and just copy some code and I'm going to append another sequence where I'm going to say tell all the boxes to scale up to a scale value of 2. It's going to be twice their size. We'll test this movie out and now once they get to their height then they scale. With tween max we could scale and move them at the same time but it's a little bit tricky to move and then scale. Well, I can tack on a whole bunch of different and thens, meaning once a tween starts, another one will begin. And here we're going to append a rotation. And now you'll see that all four boxes follow the same exact sequence. And I can go all day adding new things to have happen. I could tell all of them to set their alpha to zero. So now all of them, all right, errors, who do you think you are? Right brace, then they rotate, and then they fade out. Cool. All right, well now that we've done that, what if I want all of these individual sequences to run independently, meaning that I want the blue box to come up do its thing, and then the purple box, and then the orange box, and then the gray box. Well, that can get a little bit cumbersome. And before I go there, I'm sorry, let me just chuck back into my constructor here the fact that I can tell the entire animation to repeat indefinitely, and I can say yo-yo is going to be true. And to make this quick, let's just get rid of these two seconds here. It's going to take forever, 0.5, and whoops, 0.5. So a few minor changes, get a much quicker spin, and then a fade out, and then it all runs in reverse. Really cool. But now, again, let's make the blue box go through its thing, then the purple, then the orange, then the gray. Well, going into Timeline Basic 2, I could use the same sort of approach, um, but, the, but I'm going to show you a bad way to do it. All right, I'm going to copy this out. And instead of telling the whole array of symbols to go all at once, I might just do something like this. And I'm going to need a new uh, something else here. So I have my constructor code. And then notice, we'll get rid of the repeat right now. Okay. Notice that we have each individual movie clip having its own sequence. So only the first box is being told all the different steps it's going to go through. Test the movie and duplicate. Oh, we already had that in there. I'm an idiot. All right, so now the blue box does something really cool. All right, it does all this stuff. It moves up, it scales, it spins, it moves to the right, then it goes up and fades out. And so that in itself is the beginning of the timeline for the blue box. Well, if I want to do this for all four symbols, I could copy and I could paste all this nonsense here where each box is being told to follow the same steps. And now you'll see that everything runs just fine. The gray box doesn't move until the orange box finishes. It's all one big sequence. Well, if you know anything about loops, you can make this much more concise. Notice right there we have literally 16 lines of code here. Well, really quickly, I'm just going to slap in a little loop. And again, I don't have time to go over this right now, but it doesn't have to be that scary. I'm going to loop through every item in the array and tell each of them to do the same thing. And so now a quarter of the code, and I'm going to get the same effect.